In this video, we're going to talk about non-uniform circular motion. And what is that exactly? And how is it different from uniform circular motion? Well, let's talk about uniform circular motion. In that kind of motion, what we have is an object moving, that is a terrible circle, but we have an object moving in the circle at constant speed. So there's going to be a centripetal acceleration. So that's uniform circular motion. The key word is constant speed, even though the direction is changing continuously. Now, in non-uniform circular motion, the speed is not constant. Now, the object is still traveling in a circle. However, it's accelerating. It might be decelerating, too. But let's say it's accelerating. So it has not only a centripetal acceleration, but a tangential acceleration. Let's say it's moving in this direction at this point. So that's a non-uniform circular motion. The speed is not constant. That's the difference. So because we have two components of acceleration, the x and y component, there's going to be a resultant acceleration in that direction at that point. So the resulting acceleration is based on the tangential acceleration and the centripetal acceleration, which was pointing in the y direction at uh, this point. And if you need to calculate the resultant acceleration, it's equal to the square root of the square of the tangential acceleration plus the square of the centripetal acceleration. So that's how you could find it. Now, what equation can we use to calculate the tangential acceleration? The tangential acceleration is basically the way you would calculate acceleration in kinematics. It's the change in velocity divided by the change in time. So it's equal to V final minus V initial divided by T, where T is the time difference where the speed changes from its initial value to its final value. So that's how you can calculate the tangential acceleration. And a centripetal acceleration, you know it's simply V squared divided by the radius of the circle. So now we have everything we need in order to calculate uh, everything uh, in this problem. So let's work on it. A 1200 kilogram car accelerates from rest to a speed of 40 meters per second in five seconds at a constant rate on a circular track of radius 800 meters. What is the tangential acceleration? So let's draw a picture. So let's say this is the car and it's turning on a track. And the radius of that track is 800 meters. So we know it's going to have a centripetal acceleration that points towards the center and it has a tangential acceleration. So first, we need to calculate the tangential acceleration. We know the initial speed is zero because the car accelerates from rest, and it reaches a final speed of 40 meters per second in a time period of five seconds. So with this information, we can calculate the tangential acceleration. It's V final minus V initial divided by T. So it's the change in velocity 40 minus 0, which is 40, divided by the time. So 40 divided by 5 is 8. So the tangential velocity, I mean the tangential acceleration, is 8 meters per second squared. So that's the answer for part A. Now let's move on to part B. What is the centripetal acceleration? Now we'll need to choose a speed. And let's say we're looking for the centripetal acceleration at the final speed of 40 meters per second. If we choose the initial speed of zero, then there will be no centripetal acceleration. So we're going to go with the final speed. The centripetal acceleration is V squared over R. 
So at a speed of 40, with a radius of 800, it's going to be 40 squared is 1600. And if we divide that by 800, we're going to get a centripetal acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. So now with this information, we can calculate the net acceleration when the speed is 40. Because as the speed changes, the centripetal acceleration changes as well. So when the car accelerates, starting from rest, the centripetal acceleration is 0. When it reaches the speed of 40, the centripetal acceleration is now 2. And so as it's speeding up, the centripetal acceleration is increasing as well. Now to find the net acceleration, we're going to use this formula. It's going to be the square root of the square of the tangential acceleration plus the square of the centripetal acceleration. So this is going to be 8 squared plus 2 squared. 8 squared is 64. 2 squared is 4. 64 plus 4 is 68. So this is the square root of 68. So the net acceleration, that is the acceleration in that direction, well, it's going to be closer to the tangential acceleration since that is much larger than the centripetal acceleration. It's about 8.25 meters per second squared. So now you know how to calculate the net acceleration uh, for this type of problem. So now we can move on to part D. So now that we have the net acceleration of 8.25, what is the net force acting on the car? Well, based on Newton's second law, the net force is the product of the mass times the net acceleration. So in this example, we have a mass of 1,200 kilograms and a net acceleration of 8.25 meters per second squared. So it's going to be 1,200 times 8.25. And so the net force is approximately 9,900 newtons. So now you know how to calculate it. Now, for the sake of practice, go ahead and calculate the centripetal force and the tangential force. According to Newton's second law, the force and the acceleration factors are in the same direction. So for an object moving in non-uniform circular motion, if we have a centripetal acceleration pointed in the y direction and a tangential acceleration pointed in the x direction, and let's say this is the net acceleration, well, we're going to have a centripetal force in the same direction as a centripetal acceleration. And we're going to have a tangential force in this direction. And here's the regular force F. So if you want to calculate the centripetal force, it's simply the mass times the centripetal acceleration. So that's going to be 1,200 times a centripetal acceleration of 2. So the centripetal force is 1,200 times 2, or 2,400 newtons. Now, to calculate the tangential force, it's going to be mass times the tangential acceleration. So that's 1,200 times 8. 12 times 8 is 96, so this is going to be 9,600. And you can confirm that these answers do indeed agree with each other. The net force is going to be the square root of the square of the tangential force plus the square of the centripetal force. So the tangential force, that's 9,600, and the centripetal force is 2,400. So type that in exactly the way you see it in your calculator. If you do, you should get 98.95 newtons.
which is approximately about 9,900 if you round it. So you can calculate the net force both ways. You could just do MA or you can also use this equation if you want to. It works the same way as the net acceleration formula. Now there's one more thing we need to talk about. Sometimes you need to find the angle that the acceleration vector makes with the x-axis. So let's talk about how to find it. So here's the acceleration vector. Here is the tangential component and here's the centripetal component. So let's calculate this angle. So tangent of that angle is equal to the y component divided by the x component. Tangent is opposite divided by adjacent. So therefore the angle is going to be the arc tangent of the centripetal acceleration divided by the tangential acceleration. So in our example is going to be arc tangent or inverse tangent. The centripetal acceleration is 2. The tangential acceleration is 8. So arc tangent of 1 over 4, that's going to give us an angle of 14.04 degrees above the positive x-axis at this position. Now keep in mind, this angle might be different based on where you are in the circle. But right now, we're at the bottom of the circle. So at that position, it's 14 degrees above the x-axis. And so that's basically it. Now you know how to find everything that you need to find for problems associated with non-uniform circular motion. So just keep this in mind. In non-uniform circular motion, the object is moving in a circle and accelerating at the same time. It's not moving at the circle around a circle with constant speed. It's speeding up as it moves around a circle. Or it could be slowing down. So just keep that in mind. Anytime there is an acceleration, there is a change in velocity. And velocity is speed with direction. So in uniform circular motion, the speed is constant, but the velocity is changing because the direction is changing. So in uniform circular motion, all you have is a centripetal acceleration, which is based on the change in the direction of the object as it moves around a circle, even though it's moving around a circle with constant speed. But in non-uniform circular motion, not only do you have a change in direction, but you have a change in speed. The change in direction gives rise to the centripetal acceleration, which is always existent for any circular motion. But the change in speed is as a result of the tangential acceleration, which is what we have in non-uniform circular motion. In uniform circular motion, we only have a centripetal acceleration due to the change in direction. But in non-uniform circular motion, we have the centripetal acceleration as a result of the change in direction, but we also have a tangential acceleration as a result in the change in the magnitude of velocity or the speed. So those are some highlights between the two. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and have a good day.